And we have even more groundbreaking news to deliver. If you haven't seen any of my coronavirus videos just yet, I'll link them all down below. Of course, don't go there until you're done watching this video, but there is a lot more in this saga. And if you are enjoying the coronavirus series that I'm doing, be sure that you give this video a big thumbs up, smash the like button. It just helps and supports my channel. The Fed has now taken even more emergency steps and historic cuts to the interest rates. In an effort to help the economy withstand the coronavirus, they have now cut rates to near zero. The Federal Reserve also took massive emergency action Sunday by saying it will also purchase $700 billion worth of mortgage and treasury bonds. This surprise announcement signaled its growing concerns about the outbreak and the potential for it to cause a depression in the economy. The Fed is poised to do whatever it can to counter the risks as in the next coming months it will likely cause a recession. The Fed cut its key interest rate by a full percentage point to a range now within 0 to 0 0.25. The Fed has said that it will keep its rate there until they are confident that the economy has weathered recent events. The Fed will now be buying $500 billion worth of treasury securities as well as $200 billion worth of mortgage-backed securities. This amounts to an effort to ease market disruptions that have made it a lot harder for banks and large investors to sell treasuries. It will also help keep longer-term borrowing rates down, which should greatly help increase borrowing. So all told, the Fed's aggressive actions are intended to keep financial markets functioning and lending flowing to businesses and consumers. But unfortunately, small businesses have dried up and revenue is going out the door as they're losing a lot of customers. These employers could be forced to lay off workers and even seek bankruptcy protection in some cases. One analyst has said that this is a break the glass moment and that they are throwing everything they've got at this. The analyst said that his sense is that they must be nervous about the credit system not functioning properly. He continued saying that this move is most likely to shore up confidence. But this is becoming very reminiscent of the financial crisis of 08. This is because the Fed is slashing its benchmark short-term rate as well as pumping hundreds of billions of dollars into the financial system. Starting in 2008, the Fed slashed its key rate to near zero and kept it there for seven years. The central bank has now returned that rate, which influences many business and consumer loans, to its record low level. So if we take a look at this chart here, you'll see the emergency action by the Federal Reserve Sunday that slashed the benchmark interest rate by a full percentage point to between zero and 0 0.25. If you look here, you'll see that time period of the Great Recession where they slashed the rates tremendously and now once again in 2020. And these new bond purchases are very similar to several rounds of quantitative easing or QE. The Fed did exactly this after the Great Recession to bolster the economy and the financial system. In a conference call with reporters, Chairman of the Federal Reserve Jerome Powell stated that these purchases are intended to ensure that the credit markets are functioning properly. He said shoring up the treasury bond market and other sources of credit are vital to the health of the economy. Powell already warned that the economy will most likely shrink in the April to June quarter. He said this is because of tons of shutdowns from the coronavirus and because of the broad pullback of consumer spending. He said the necessary behavioral changes to stem the outbreak are inherently harmful to the economy. These include an avoidance of travel, shopping, and mass gatherings, and he also did state that the economy was in very good health before the virus did hit. Powell is unsure when the rebound will take effect. However, he is certain that the economy will just run the course and once again resume to its normal levels of activity. He did in fact make it clear though that the virus is having a profound effect of the people of the US and all over the world. He did stress this as many experts have already have that the primary response will have to come from healthcare providers. But he did still say that economic policy makers must do what we can to ease hardship caused by disruptions to the economy and support a swift return to normal once they've passed. Powell did express a concern that many economists have in recent weeks. It's the fact that the Fed and the European Central Bank and other world leading banks only have a limited ability to ease the damage caused by this virus outbreak. The chairman did add that the White House and Congress would have to use tax and spending policies in an effort to boost the economy. He said on the conference call that we do not have the tools to reach individuals and particularly small businesses. He did know that this is a multifaceted problem and it does require answers from different parts of the government and society. Powell noted on the call that they will be going in strong starting tomorrow, referring to this past Monday, to do what they can to restore market function. A statement from the Federal Reserve of New York noted that the purchases of treasuries will start, it started this past Monday with $40 billion worth as well as roughly $80 billion worth of mortgage-backed securities over this next month. And Sunday's action drew a rare praise from President Donald Trump as he is very happy with this outcome. He attacked the Fed as recently as Saturday, who he has aggressively have in the past, saying that they're not acting quickly or aggressively enough. In a White House briefing on the coronavirus, 
He did say that it makes him very happy and he thinks that the people and markets should be thrilled. Now in any other scenario, Wall Street would probably act positively to this, but in this case, it just didn't help. U.S. stock futures began falling after the Fed's announcement. Futures for the S&P 500 index ended up falling 4.5% while gold prices actually rose 3.5%. And this past Monday, stocks tumbled again as the Dow plunged to a three-year low. This is because worries mounted over the emergency action that the Fed took this past weekend, and it ended up showing and displaying the fact that the economy is in much worse shape than previously believed. So instead of soothing the market, another Federal Reserve interest rate cut actually ended up having the opposite effect. Stocks stripped once again another circuit breaker at the New York Open with the S&P 500 falling more than 7% and trading was halted for 15 minutes. And Monday mid-morning at one point, the index was down 7.9% after its previous lows. And at one point, the Dow was down 8.3% or 1,920 points down and the Dow hasn't been this low since May of 2017. This is while the Nasdaq composite, after hitting a record high earlier in the year, dropped 7.8%. This is coming off the heels of the fact that there are now more than 3,000 cases of the novel coronavirus in the United States, according to government agencies and the CDC. And it wasn't just in the U.S. Markets around the world plunged on Monday, including China, who is seeing an unprecedented economic collapse. On Monday, Australia had its worst day on record as the benchmark index crashed more than 10%. This is while London's FTSE 100 index fell nearly 5.7%. France's CAC 40 plunged 7%, and Germany's DAX, or DAX, fell roughly 5.7%. And if those numbers sound bad, wait till you hear the airline stocks plunges. Global travel restrictions had a profound effect on airline companies as they were forced to cancel tons of flights. In Europe, Air France, or ticker symbol KLM, dropped 16%. British Airways owner IAG, or ticker symbol ICAGY, dropped nearly 26%. And in the US, American Airlines, or ticker symbol AAL, shares fell some 8%, while United Airlines, or ticker symbol UAL, was down some 17%. And Brent crude, or the global benchmark for oil, dropped 10% down to $30.57 per barrel. But Steve Mnuchin, the Secretary of the United States Treasury, does not think that we are yet in a recession. This is while many leading economists say that we are already in recession or it will arrive soon. JP Morgan Chase predicts that the economy will shrink at a 2% annual rate and will drop 3% in the April to June quarter. This is all coming off the heels when two weeks ago the Fed decided to do a surprise move and cut interest rates as a way to offset the disease's damage to the economy. The Fed cut its short-term interest rate by half a percentage point and this is the first time they're doing this between policy meetings since the financial recession of 08. So in short, the biggest concern is that the world's top central banks have exhausted their policy toolkit, specifically the Fed of the US, which is the most influential and powerful out of all of them. The markets now appear to be defenseless to another selling onslaught. So this fiscal step is crucial in avoiding a dreaded global credit event. I'm sure there'll be more news to deliver to you as this just continues and seems to almost have no end in sight. Do you think we are already in a recession or is yet to come? Tell me down in the comments down below what you think. What do you think of this whole scenario? But I do hope you enjoyed that video. Hope you got value out of it. If you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, smash that like button. And if you'd like to see more videos from my channel, I post videos every single week covering business, finance, entrepreneurship, mindset and strategy, and tips and tricks from my own experience. Be sure that you subscribe. I post videos every single week. You're not gonna wanna miss it, especially in this crucial time. And if you'd like to be notified every time I make a new one so that you're first in line to see it, be sure that you hit that little notification bell as well so that you're first in line to see the video before anyone else. See you in the next video.